Welcome to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin and I was about to record another tutorial when I loaded up Blender.org and found we have Blender 3.3 LTS. I haven't even downloaded it yet, so I'm going to get started downloading this. As many of you know, my most favorite releases are the long-term support releases. And that is because those are the best for production. So they, uh, as time goes on, they fix bugs. But they, there's no new features, which that's what a lot of people don't like because they want the newest and greatest and latest. But I like stability. So especially if I'm doing product now, I like experimenting. And actually, because of the new stuff in the VSC, I have been using the releases before 3.3. I have been using those because of the new features of the VSC. And that's why I'm particularly excited about 3.3 is because now I can actually kind of sit on the long term release with the new uh, features that that have been implemented so far. Of course, there's going to be more features that I won't have access to in production at least, but that's okay because again, I like stability. I get a good workflow and I'm going. Part of the liability since 3.0, because that's what 3.0 introduced the new video sequence editor stuff. And then 3.1 and 3.2, like every time they do an update, like a new feature is created, but something breaks. Um, that I'm used to. The something that I need for my tutorial making breaks. So this is super awesome. I'm, I'm really excited about 3.3. I hope they fixed some of the bugs that I tested in the when it was in alpha and even in beta, but I'm guessing they haven't. But um, I'll be posting them here in this video, the bugs. But this time I'm also going to actually try to create my own bug reports. Uh, I just don't know how to do it very well, and it's a bit time-consuming, and so I just never really have time to do it. But anyway, having said that, let's get this installed. And you know what? Actually, I'm, I'm so excited that I, I don't even know why I, I downloaded it from there. I should have downloaded it from the Blender launcher, which is what I normally do. Uh, so we're going to do our stable. Is it stable? There we go. Yeah, 3.3 LTS stable. We're going to download it from there. But as we're downloading, we might as well go to the development, the Blender release notes here. And that's on wiki.blender.org. Did they change this? I thought it was developer.blender.org for some reason. Anyway, I don't know. So I'm going to go there. And then, of course, we're going to go to VFX and video right away. Oh, look, as we've already got tracking. I like that. Oh, anytime I see updates to the tracking stuff, I, I just, I, I'm like, oh. What, what, what new things do they have here? So let's just, I'm going to browse here. We've got tracking implemented image from plane marker operator, which creates or updates image data block from pixels on the plane, which the plane marker sees. Yeah, I did see this one already. Actually, they were, you know, in the, in the alpha version that we're testing this out. Um, this isn't actually all that exciting to me because there's many ways to get, do the same thing. I mean, already this maybe makes it easier. But what else do we have? We implemented motion tracking data prefill for compositor nodes. Uh, is that related to this? No, it looks like two different ones. I'm going to go there. Okay, compositor prefill active scene movie clip in more nodes. Prefills movie clip from scene into the following nodes. King screen, plane track, deform track position. Okay, do we have an example of this? I'm curious. Okay, so... It doesn't show anything, but I guess it just pre-fills a lot of information that wasn't automatically filled in, which uh, could come in handy, of course. Um, yeah, well, that's cool. So anytime the movie clip editor and the tracking stuff is updated, what I'm looking for is like, you know, what's coming out in like After Effects and things like that, where you have this facial like capture, like you just paint, here's the face, and then it like deforms to the face because that would be so much easier to create like different face tracks so that uh, you didn't have to do a whole bunch of tedious work in the 3d editor um that's what i'm looking for when i see see these types of just more robust like tracking stuff tracking complicated shots blurry footage just that that would be like if they could really hone in on like tracking a complicated shot just making it look really easy that's what i like so uh let's keep going here uh clip better default descending average sorting okay i'm going to skip that one mask editor add mask blending factor for combined overlay okay this looks cool add mask spline visibility overlay option let's see what that is masks are always drawn smooth uh i'm looking for 
<laughs> picture or video. When several mask layers are used, it's unclear from the clip editor which mask is currently being edited. Yes, yep. This also affects how the tools interact with the layers. As all mask vertices can be selected at all times, unless explicitly disabled, clicking to close a vertex of a different mask layer should switch the active layer as well as the active spline. Okay, yeah. This is even worse when a bunch of layers and vertices and spline handles are active. Yes, okay, yep. Um, yeah, no, I know what they're talking about here. So we can test that out in a, in a minute here. Adding a mask blending factor. Adds a new par parameter to the combined overlay mode of the mask editor. A blending factor allows you to blend user to blend masks mask at the mat blend the mask exterior with the original footage to visualize the content of the mask in a more intuitive way. Oh I think I think this is gonna be really good. I think I know what they're talking about here. That's that is gonna be awesome actually. Uh, okay, and then we've got this one, add a toggle for mask spline drawing. Adds an overlay option to show hide spline points lines of masks in the mask editor. It also moves the smooth option up. The position left of the selection dropdown was misleading. Okay, yeah, well, we can check those out. What's this one? Mask editor always use smooth drawing. The mask is expected to be always displayed smooth. And the option mainly existed for some la in some la legacy drivers. I don't know what this means. Always draw smooth. Like, don't you want hard edges sometimes? Or is that not what it's talking about? That one's a little confusing to me. In reality, though, what I would like to see from the mask editor is better animation keyframes. For some reason, animating masks is completely different than animating anything else in Blender. For example, you can't duplicate the keyframes. You can't press Shift D and duplicate, at least for, to my knowledge, unless for some reason in that editor, that key sh keyboard shortcut is different. There's also not a lot of separation between masks or layers or points. You basically have to animate the entire thing as one keyframe. It's just a lot more rigid, and that's the work I would love to see on the mask editor in the future. Okay, um, let's go into the sequencer now. Well, actually, no, let's do the mask editor, and let's open this up. I think I've got Blender in my library. Yep, launch 3.30. LTS, super excited. Boom, okay, we are 3.3.0. Let's uh, just start by going to a new and video editing. Close this, of course, <sighs> I always do that. Right away, I know uh, I wanna check this, this whole channel thing and the limit view. So uh, limit view to contents, I don't like this. So I'm just gonna uncheck that. And I'm gonna also uncheck channels uh, for now because I wanna show you something that I think is uh, a bit of a bug, and I don't think it has to do with the, the recent Blender versions. I think this, this has been here for a long time and nobody's reported it or fixed it or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna save this as something actually. Okay, so yeah, when I saved it, this pops back up. It doesn't remember my, my selection. The limit view to contents does remember the selection, so that's good. The channels doesn't. If I save this as something else, it doesn't. Um, now, if I just do a regular save, it's fine. But if I save this as another iteration or some, some other name, this window pops back open. Oh, not that window. <laughs> the channels. The channels pop back open. Um, and this is not just here, but this is in other areas that I'll show you later. So like in the image editor and the masking and stuff too, it's the same. Um, but I want to get to actually, actually, let's go to the masking. Speaking of, uh, let's do VFX and masking. So I'm actually not going to do that because this is using, let's just duplicate the rendering. I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to make this one my masking and we can just delete this one for now. Okay, so then I'm going to change this to mask and then, oh, we need to actually add something. So let's go ahead and add. Okay, uh, I know that I need more <laughs> more footage. I need to I need to just film stuff just for like uh, doing demos like this because you're just usually stuck with my face or an inception of me doing a tutorial. Okay, so let's uh, find another maybe more flattering picture of myself. So going to masking and press F12 and we can see the render results here and now we can add our mask. Uh, one of the things I remember it saying is um, if we, there we go. Okay, so here's the blending factor. So we've got the overlay, which shows you the black and white mask. I'm guessing the blend factor it tells you, it actually blends it into 
Uh, okay, alpha channel, we want that combined. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, okay, combined outline, white, black, outline, spline. Okay, that's cool, that overlay. Okay, okay, this is not what I thought it was, or at least it's not doing what I think it's supposed to be doing. Uh, blending factor, let's hover the overlay blending factor of rasterized mask. The blending factor allows users to blend the mask exterior with the original footage. Oh, okay. Does that mean if I go back here? Uh, I guess I have to use the mask, don't I? Hmm. This doesn't make any sense to me. It's already doing these things. Um, overlay blending factor. Oh, wait, hold on. Is it talking about just the spline? Which I have unchecked. There we go. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, it has to be overlay. I'm missing something. The alpha overlay is unaffected by this change. Yes, okay, I found that out. The existing combined overlay is used like before, covering everything outside the mask in black, but can be blended with the slider in the mask overlay to look at the exterior. Well, I don't think it's working then. It's a mystery. Yeah, it sure is a mystery. Because <laughs> this one isn't working the way I thought it was supposed to be working. Okay, so at this point, either two things are happening. Either I'm completely incompetent, and I have no idea what this what this is actually supposed to be doing, or it's not working. What I gather this to be is the blending the background and the black, so that you could still see, kind of like the Passapart 2 here in your camera view. Like this, you have this here, and you can go to your camera. For those of you who don't know, go to Viewport Display, and then here, let's pull this. Right here, it's called passepartout. I think it's a French word. Uh, but this is 50%. If I drag this all the way up to one, you can see it's completely black. This is what I am thinking that's supposed to be here in the mask. And it's not working. So anyway, let's move on. Okay, talking about layers, um, I think what they're talking about is... I'm going to make another layer. And then if I disable this layer, okay. Now I, I think I'm going to also... <laughs> Botch this one up too. So you actually have to select the uh, mask layer before you add the mask, or whichever one you want to add it on. So, but I mean, you could already like here. Let's. I'm gonna try. So I'll deselect everything, and then I'm gonna select everything. Okay, no. So uh, that's not it. I mean, you can already deselect it like this for the one you don't want showing. So I don't know what that is either. Add a toggle for mask spline drawing. Well, yeah, I mean, that's uh, we saw that earlier. So just that's the whole thing. That's all splines. But you can also do it here for the different layers. And of course, I'll always smooth, use smooth drawing. I don't understand that one either. So as always, leave me a comment if you understand that more. But I'm more interested right now in the sequencer. So let's look at some of these. Add filter method for, to strip transform. Previously, nearest interpolation. Filter was used for preview because it has offered good performance and bilinear was used for rendering. Didn't didn't we already have something like this? I think I did this already. And we'll scale this and we'll rotate this. Okay, so this is just, yeah, I think that there is what they're talking about. Uh, and then you can change this here by linear to nearest, which change <laughs> changes that a little bit. Uh, not really for any good thing on my view, but anyway, okay, I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Now change menu, the C key, supports change scene. Oh, interesting. I never used the C key anyway. This is a new option in the C key menu, new ch change scene option. Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's do a copy settings. So we have nothing here and scene 001, 001. Okay, so then we have C, change input path. Uh, I don't see a C. Am I using the right one? Am I on the right Blender, Blender, Blender 3.3? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> it said, I'm reading this right, right? It said, you can see this right here. It says 3.3.0. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, supports change scene. Let's look at, this is a new option in C key menu. Ah, there we go. Okay. So you actually have to have a scene, uh, change scene, and then I can go to scene one. But I don't, 
know how I would use that. I, I guess I would have to have multiple scenes and then I have to switch, I guess, switching back and forth between them. Okay. Well, maybe, again, maybe this is because I never used this in, in the first place and this is to change the in effect input type of different things. So change um, the effect type to a different effect. I've never really used that. Okay, so so far this has been very anticlimactic. Add scene and strip at the same time in one action. Allows operator to add a new scene at the same time as the strip, I think I'm supposed to say. This is very handy for storyboarding. Um, add, oh yeah, right there, it says new scene. Yeah, add a scene. So, uh, and it created the scene 002, which we can also now find up here. Okay, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. That's pretty cool. Okay, delete. Strip and scene in one step. Okay, so that's pr pretty much the same thing. Now we can. <laughs> Did we delete that? Did it... Oh, nope. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Let's try. Uh, X. Erase strips. Delete data. Eh? Ah. If I uncheck that. Ah. Hey, hey, look at that. So delete data means it's going to delete that scene as well. Uh, in order to see this little pop-up here, you have to go to view and then enable adjust last operation to see that there. Okay, let's move on. Add a new retiming system. Sped up strips can be edited as normal strips. Oh, I hope this is from one of my suggestions. Um, so for the um, speed control, let's we're going to test that out, the speed control. Also, movie playback speed is adjusted to match scene frame rate. Okay. Wasn't that always the case? Improved retiming patch implements a better way to control playback speed than it is possible to do with a speed effect. Oh, so this is something that you can control sp playback speed without a speed effect? Speed factor property can be set in the time panel. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, there are two layers of control. Option to retime the movie to match scene frames per second, custom speed factor control, option to retime movie to match scene frames per second, right? Okay, custom speed factor to control playback rate. Since playback rate is strip property is now possible to manipulate a strip as normal, even if it is retimed. Okay, I'm curious to see what that looks like in practice. To facilitate manipulation, some functions need to consider speed factor and apply the necessary corrections to strip offset or strip start. These corrections may need to be float numbers, so start and offsets must be float as well. Okay. Sound strips now use speed factor instead of pitch. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the audio and the video are now using the same type of thing. This means that strips will change length to match the usable length. Oh, that's cool. I, I really want to test this one out. Okay, we're get we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. In addition, it is possible to group movie and sound strips and change the speed of a meta strip. That is awesome. That is awesome. All right, let's try this. Let's just delete everything here. We're gonna bring that movie back in. Okay, so if this works, it's going to be much more intuitive. The audio and the video will will match. Um, the speed, whether it's faster or slower. So uh, let's control G to put that in a meta strip. And I'm curious. So if you scroll down here to time, uh, we should have a uh, speed factor. Here we go. So speed factor, if we want to go half of the speed, or actually, let's just do faster. Let's do double the speed. So I'm going to put two here. Yep. And it shortens the strip like we would expect. And now my voice should be really high pitched and it should match uh, as just make sure our playback is right. Um, sync to audio is right. Okay, that's what I want. So. Hi, welcome to Blender Frenzy. My name is Justin, and this morning I woke up. Oh, that is amazing. That is amazing. I like that. Uh, so yeah, half the speed then. It would be slower. All right, so I'm going to pull an Ian Hubert here and do a Justin from the future because my sound wasn't working, my desktop sound, so you couldn't actually hear what was happening. But I found two major bugs with the new speed factor or the uh, time, yeah, this time speed factor here. So um, here's a meta strip. I'm just going to do, uh, let's just go back to one here. Um, we've got, my name is Justin, and this morning I woke up. So you should you should be able to hear that. And you can see how I can put the timeline cursor anywhere Come to Blender Frenzy. and the audio and video lineup 
make sure your playback you have sync to audio here. My name is Justin. Old. So that that's no problem. But um, if I go to the beginning and then I do a speed factor of 0 0.5, mean, meaning it's slowing it down, the speed is slowing down, but that means we lengthen the strip. But um, you have to start it from the very beginning. So if you start from the very beginning of the strip, it's fine. So. Okay. Uh, so the first thing, if I now move the timeline cursor to any place else other than the beginning, the audio and the video don't match. And uh, that's not just the meta strip. Uh, so I tried it in here as well with the individual ones. But the second thing is, before I get to that, the second thing is the audio doesn't automatically resize. The video automatically resizes, and you can see the video plays at half of the speed all the way through here. Now, I don't know if that's, let me, let's see, actually, let's test this. So if I do a speed factor of two, this is going to play twice as fast, but you, of course it's shorter. Hi, welcome to Blender Frenzy. My name is Justin, and this morning I woke up, and now I'm old. Okay, so let's just see. Blender Frenzy. My name is Justin. My name is Justin, and this morning I woke up. Same thing. So if I start anywhere other than the very beginning of the strip, uh, if I skip around, the audio and the video are out of sync. Now, the length of the, the audio in this case doesn't matter because you're shortening it. So there's plenty of audio that's already there. But if you lengthen the strip, uh, the audio isn't automatically lengthened like the video is. Uh, so I'll show you this is, we're just going to get rid of the meta strip control alt G to get rid of that. Um, so you can put the speed factor on both of these. Uh, you can't do the copy to selected, so we have to do it one by one. So let's do 0.5 here. So see, this video automatically lengthens to exactly what it, we set it at, the 0.5. And then if I click this and I drag this out, you can see it, it extends it. But uh, we'll just pull this out and you can see here's the where the content ends, the video inside of the strip, it ends there, and then we hang on that last frame. But if I come to the audio and I do the same thing and I do 0.5, the audio doesn't resize at all. And if I click and I drag this, you can see the content technically ends here. So it's not telling Blender that the content has moved. Although it does work if you manually move it. So if I play this now, uh, actually we'd have to play it from the beginning. So now you can see that this is moving past the content, which technically the content is still going. So there's a bit of a bug here where the audio isn't resizing to the speed factor uh, the same way you would expect and the same way the video is. And this is a bit of a shame because it makes it a little bit frustrating knowing that this is super powerful. This is great. This is so much better than the speed control effect in a lot of ways because you can be really accurate and um, you can also, again, put both of the things in the meta strip theoretically. So let's just Alt O on these, both of these here. Let's put uh, this back at one. We'll put this back at one as well. Um, so we're... My name is Justin. Okay, so that's that's fine. And then we can control G to put those in a meta strip. And then we only have to change the speed factor of this to do uh, 0.5 and then go to the beginning. So this all works wonderfully, except that one thing where I would also then have to tab in here, change this uh, to uh, a 0.5 as well, and then we'd have to uh, grab this and we'd have to, you know, change, uh, times this by two. Duration, we'd have to do times two. And then that would match. And then we'd tab back out. And then you have this. So right now it kind of defeats the purpose of putting it in a meta strip so that we can change the audio and the video at the same time. But when they fix that bug, that's gonna be super awesome because then you'll be able to speed up and slow down audio and video at the same time and they, they will match theoretically. Now the moving the timeline cursor isn't 
that big of a deal unless you're doing a lot of cuts and stuff, but um, you can always start it at the beginning of the strip. It will match up. Well, actually, <laughs> here it's not. So this would not be, you wouldn't be able to do the meta strip, I'm guessing. Okay, so yeah, doing that actually completely, the blender just doesn't know how to handle that because I'm not getting any audio at all. There you go. There's your one of your first bug fixes, hopefully, that you can um, work on to get this working properly. But other than that, this is super, super powerful, and I'm excited for the fix, and I will do my best to try to report that this bug specifically, and then I'll link to a video. Maybe I'll just put a, a clip of the video just as a standalone bug thing. Okay, back to past Justin. They need to change it. Let's see what happens when we cut. I'm gonna cut this and then we're just gonna see, we'll cut this here too. If you start at the beginning of the strip. Morning I woke up and now I'm. It, it, it'll work. Okay, got it. Still really good progress. Uh, I hope they continue to tweak this so that um, it's even more intuitive in the future. Let's move on. Add API function to select a display meta strip. Okay. More coding and stuff for, uh, again, not really too familiar with the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, FFmpeg playback for VFR movies is now correct. Uh, VFR variable frame rate. Oh, right. So this is also one of the things I made a video about and I had a question uh, someone commented on one of my videos. And so the variable frame rates, it'll play, it'll play correctly or maybe align the strips correctly. I've never really had a problem with variable frame rate stuff. So, but that was my video called, I think it was like multiple frame rates, question mark, question mark, question mark. So uh, I'll put a link to that in the description if I remember, if I remember. Okay, so that's the good stuff. Having said all of this, um, there were a couple of bugs. So if I import it in now, like if I put my timeline cursor right here, the video is gonna pop in right here. Uh, uh, my timeline cursor, and I can actually check that. So if I go to select this, I have different options over here. But here, the start frame. So the start frame is where my timeline cursor is currently, and that's where it's going to put. But I can actually just put the start frame at one if I wanted to. Uh, but that's not very intuitive. I want to put it wherever I decide the timeline is. So like if I'm going through my footage and I'm like, okay, I want the video right here. I'll go directly to where I want to put in with the timeline cursor and then I'll add in the movie like this and then it will put it right there. Okay, so this is not the case with clicking and dragging it from a browser on your computer. So if I click and drag, it's actually going to put it exactly where my cursor is, which is better than what it was doing before. The bug before was I would drag it in here and it would put it all the way down uh, at the bottom, like this, channel one, frame one. And that was really annoying, especially if I was zoomed in here and I was trying to add a piece here, it would be putting it all the way. And I was like, where's where's my video going? So they did fix that, but now um, it's still not very intuitive because when I'm dragging it in, it doesn't hit this. But that's not the worst one. Something that I found out recently made my editing almost useless. It was the meta strip size. So if I have something, uh, let's just, let's just make a couple of cuts here. Okay. What was happening before that I found is if I've tried to move this meta strip, ah, and it is happening. You can see the meta strip resizes. The start is now over here. It just resizes the meta strip. This is offset. There's nothing over here, but it resizes this for some reason. And if I press Alt O, it will change back. But uh, if I move it again, and if I keep moving it, it keeps growing. And sometimes I found that it didn't actually clear that offset when I did the Alt O. So that is really strange. So if I go in here, this is what it what it looks like. Now this is this is uh, almost unusable, especially, I mean, now if I can do Alto, at least that will save me the frustrations that I was having before, because when I would move it and see, it only, it only happens if I'm moving it from a distance. Yeah, look at that. See, so the further back I am, or the further zoomed out I am, um, the bigger that happens. This is just such a strange bug. 
but uh, that's not that's not good. And I don't. I think that is a bug. And I'm going to try to report it if you know. Ten to ten doesn't watch this video and see it and report it before I get or get to it. Yeah, that was that was bad. Okay, Justin from the future again. And as I was editing this video in three point three for the specific tutorial, I want to show you uh, about these this meta strip problem that I'm having. So here's my end my end card, my outro basically. And so what I want to do is this is an overlay. You can see here and this is transparent here and it's supposed to overlay on top of the final part of my video. So uh, what I want to do is I want to grab this and I want to move this. Oh look at that and it it resizes all of this junk here um, and then you can see it's uh, I have meta, two meta strips inside this meta strip and so if we go into this meta strip you can see what was happening here was the speed control was speed control was all the way way over here and it's not and it's not showing that now uh, because I've already messed around with this but um, if I then do alt O to clear that offset come in here basically I have to just make sure I move this and then right click to cancel that action so the speed controls reset and then I come out and then with this one, Alt O, then you would think that now I can okay. come back out here and then I can do Alt O, which I was able to do the very first time, but then there's just so many glitches that are happening now that now uh, the meta strip is, is I can't, I can't do anything with it. See, it keeps resizing it. And, and even, even here, like it's just, it thinks that there's more room inside than there actually is and that is a problem a big problem so to fully fix that i would have to control alt g to get rid of that meta strip and then we have these two meta strips inside um so can i do alt o okay but if i try to move these you know see these are resized as well so i'd have to okay let's get rid of control alt g get rid of that meta strip and then this one this one is hidden Oh, but that's a mask, so I have to have this one. <laughs> so you see how time-consuming and tedious this this would be. Uh, Control Alt G, get rid of that, and then um, kind of reset these speed controls so that they work. Now I wouldn't need the speed controls technically in here if I was just doing the speed factor here. So maybe the speed control on something with the speed factor that's also messing things up but uh, that is also something that could be fixed but anyway so then I okay uh, this uh, each of these was in a meta strip so we got a meta strip okay and then put this one in a meta strip and this one is going to be my mask so I have to rename that to mask fireburn okay and then I have to have this one using that fire burn mask, mask fire burn right there. And then we've got to hide that again. Okay, and then I could just use this. That would be fine uh, without putting this into a meta strip. But I've created my intros and outros as assets that I use for every video. And so I want to have them, you know, in a meta strip that I can just drag around. So I'm guessing now that if I start dragging this around, okay, so that's seems to be okay. Um, for now, but I don't know why. I don't know why this is okay, but um, before it, it wasn't. Uh, it was also giving me problems when I uh, just snapped it. Okay, so there you go, now we have the problem. So if I snap this to the end, now it's doing the same thing. So it's just really funky, really weird stuff going on. This really needs to be fixed for me to use Blender 3.3 in production. So for now, I'm gonna still use 3.2 in production. Okay, so I've opened 3.2.2, and this is what I would expect. So if I click and drag, the meta strip stays the same way of where it's supposed to stay. And then if I move the timeline cursor here and then press S, it snaps it and it doesn't resize it. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Blender, please fix this as soon as you can for 3.3. Let me show you the other one that this has been for just forever. So if I have, um, let me add in uh, that masking one again. So we've got this open over here and this open over here. And then if I close this, and if I close this, there we go. So we have something that looks like this. 
And then if I save it, and then I save as another iteration, the two toolbar and properties panel open up again. That's not that big of a deal in this situation here because it doesn't cover up anything. But if I'm using this like, okay, so I have to close this and I have to close this and then that's fine. And I'll, you know, do some work here, you know, add in a mask here, bring this mask over, whatever, and resize it, yada, yada, yada. And then I save, okay. And then I want to go save it as something else. Oh, look, these pop up again. And this is because I do this a lot and I save in iterations a lot. This is so annoying. I don't know why I have to close these every time because it doesn't remember my settings, even when I'm just saving it as something else. Always been the case in Blender. So it has it's not new, uh, but I thought I'd bring it up here since we're talking about things that I want them to fix in 3.3. So all in all, I'm generally happy about the long term support release. I know that this is going to become more and more stable as more and more bug fixes are rolled out. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that the stuff we tried with the masking doesn't seem to either work or maybe I'm just not understanding it right. And I am super both excited and disappointed that the speed stuff didn't really work like it was supposed to, because that is super cool. Having this time, the speed factor, um, having it be a slider in the time, I, I would kind of prefer to have a function over here that would just do that, like press and hold shift or alt or control or something as you drag the ends. And then that would adjust the speed factor. I think that would be beautiful. Maybe the outline changes to a different color so that you know that it's it's sped up or slowed down. Or maybe that you put another overlay number here to show what the speed factor is here. You like at the bottom corner over here, uh, show, show what this is here. I mean, that's probably more of a feature than a bug fix, but I do want them to fix this bug of the audio not adjusting properly there. And then also the timing, I hope that they fix that soon. So with that said, I'll get on to the tutorial I was going to do before I did this one. So you will see me in the next one.